Chicken cacciatore is one of those Italian-descended classics that has a million definitions. To me, it's chicken braised with tomatoes and bell peppers. Here's my attempt to give it a significant flavor boost by using a pretty unconventional process. This is cooked entirely under the broiler, thus it has a deep, smoky, roasted flavor and color. First thing you need is a big roasting tray. Your biggest tray might be an aluminum baking sheet, but I would not use that. We're cooking a tomato sauce in this, and the acid could dissolve a noticeable amount of metal out of the aluminum pan. Any other super wide pan will be fine. Now we need a couple of pounds or a kilo of tomatoes. These are from my garden, and sauce is usually how I use homegrown tomatoes that have significant defects. I can just cut off that yucky part, and I've got a beautiful half of a tomato. All of these, I'm just going to cut out the stem end and then cut them in half. No smaller, that's important. Half tomatoes. In those go to the roasting tray. Next, the bell peppers. Three of them, any color. Going to cut them all in half and then just reach in there and tear out the stem, the seeds, any big white hunks of rib that I can easily extract into the tray with those pepper halves. Like three big shallots or one onion. Again, cut them each in half and then peel off the skin. I'll cut off the tips and then very carefully shave off the roots. I don't want to cut too deeply into the root end because then nothing would hold the layers together. I want to keep them together. Into the tray. Oh, now would be a good time to get your broiler heating. That's the element at the very top of the oven, often called a grill outside the United States. Got a few garlic cloves here. I'll just cut off the root ends and then smash them with the side of the knife just to open them up a bit and to loosen the skin. I want whole, lightly crushed garlic cloves for this. In they go. I'll turn that around so you can see everything. Here's like a pound and a half of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Five or six of them. Such a convenient product. It's just chicken stew waiting to happen. Don't be tempted to use breasts. This recipe would turn them into chalk. I'll give everything a good drizzle of olive oil. That's pretty. Then grind on enough pepper to season every surface in here, not just the surfaces that are currently facing up. Same deal with the salt. Enough to cover everything. Then it's time to get in there and toss everything around. Just get every surface coated in oil and seasoning, and as you go, turn all the vegetables cut side down. Skins should be facing up. That's important. It's also important that you get everything as spaced out as possible. Nothing should be sitting on top of anything else, with the exception of the garlic, which I'm tucking under the chicken to protect it. It would burn under the broiler, and burnt garlic is repulsive. There we go. If some stuff is overlapping, don't stress about it. Everything in here will start shrinking rapidly as it cooks. If things don't fit now, they will soon. Right under a glowing hot broiler, this goes on a rack near the top. That'll take about an hour in there, but we'll need to check it frequently. Just as we can check ourselves with the sponsor of this video, let's get checked. I'm gonna be honest, I have been treating my body like a dumpster since COVID quarantine began, been drinking way too much alcohol and eating way too much sugar. I'm curious if this is really hurting me, so I've decided to do a diabetes and heart test. Let's get checked as a way to do all kinds of basic medical diagnostics at home yourself, everything from COVID tests to sexual health tests. The pricing is totally transparent and reasonable, which is the opposite of how it normally works here in the States. We often have no idea how much a test our doctor orders is going to cost us until it's too late. The tests are easy to do at home. Even this blood test, the spring-loaded lancets, are foolproof and hardly hurt. Then you just package up your sample and throw it in the mail. You get your results via their app really fast, and yep, my cholesterol and everything is fine so far, but my triglycerides are pretty high. That's fat in the bloodstream. Generally happens when you drink too much booze and or eat too many calories. Guilty on both counts. I can schedule a free call with a nurse to help me understand these results. This is all legit. Real doctors and nurses are running this show, and you can get 20% off anything that you need to get checked by hitting my link in the description and using my code ADAM20 at checkout. 20% off any test with my link and code in the description. Thank you. Let's get checked. And because I don't want to get atherosclerosis and die, I'm going to have this chicken with mashed cauliflower instead of a starch, which would be traditional. We always had chicken cacciatore with rice growing up, but this is honestly going to be better. You just hack the cauliflower into random small chunks and cram them into a pot. I'll just fill that like halfway up with water. Anything that isn't submerged is going to steam just fine. Put that on high heat and cover it. Let's check on our chicken. You might think, oh no, we burned it. Yes, we did, and that is good. I'm trying to burn everything in here except for the chicken and the garlic. In the end, we're just going to do this. Lift the burnt skin right off, and underneath we'll have a smoky, deep-roasted vegetable. That's why everything needs to be skin side up. Back under that goes. While I'm waiting, I'll just peel and chop a ton of garlic for the cauliflower. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to puree it eventually. I'll check the cauliflower with a fork. Not quite soft yet. It needs to be really soft. Check the chicken again. When the peppers feel just barely cooked to me, I'm going to 
take them out. If you want to get them really soft and kind of melt them into a sauce like the tomatoes, then leave them in. But I want them to maintain structural integrity, so they're done. I'll flip the chicken around to get some color on the opposite side, while the first side can start stewing in the accumulated liquid at the bottom of the pan. Don't stress anymore about covering up the garlic. It can start getting a little color now. I'll also throw in some capers, the pickled, unopened flower bud of a Mediterranean bush. I don't want too much of that salty brine, so I'm lifting them out with a fork, which kind of functions like a strainer. Olives would be more traditional in chicken cacciatore. They'd be great instead. And I could use some more liquid in the pan, so I'm going to give a big shot of balsamic vinegar. White or red doesn't really matter. Tomatoes that get a lot of long, intense heat generally need some additional acid to brighten them back up. Back under that goes. Cauliflower is soft, and uncharacteristically for me, I'm going to strain that into an actual strainer. I need the pot empty and reasonably clean for the next step, which is to brown a big knob of butter. Melt it until the water boils out and it goes brown and nutty. That'll really help the flavor of the cauliflower. In goes the garlic and then the heat goes all the way down. I don't want to burn the garlic. Just cook it until it's softened, back in the cauliflower goes, stir it around, and if you're going to put in any milk or buttermilk at all, just do a tiny splash. This doesn't need nearly as much moisture as mashed potatoes do. If anything, I put in too much. Check the chicken again, and if it gets too much dry heat, it'll go leathery. At some point, you might want to add some water to the pan, or maybe just put the tomatoes on top of the chicken to get them wet. I like when dark meat goes kind of crispy, but I overshot the mark here. Make sure they get some wet heat. Time to puree the cauliflower. An immersion blender is the most convenient way, nice and smooth. Give it a taste. That needs salt, obviously, but let's grate in a bunch of pecorino or parmesan cheese. Always do this before you taste for seasoning because it's very salty. Okay, now we just need a bunch of pepper and a little salt. That is delicious. It can sit covered on warm until we need it. All right, chicken feels soft, like I could pull it apart. That means it's done. Now time to simply lift the burnt skins off the tomatoes. This is oddly satisfying. You'll find it hard to pull the skins off the smaller chunks. That's fine, just leave those. A little burnt skin will give this sauce a delicious smoky flavor. We're just trying to manage the smokiness, so pull off whatever you can easily pull off and leave the rest. Same deal with the shallots. Just lift off the burnt layer and discard. Now I'm going to push my chicken away to safety, and with my tomatoes and shallots and garlic, all at this end. I'm just going to mash everything with a wooden spoon. Time to turn this into sauce. I'm scraping any delicious fond off the bottom and sides of the tray as I go. Back in the chicken goes. Cover each piece with some sauce, and then I'll turn on the burner that's under this side of the tray. I want to get this simmering so the chicken can have some time actually stewing inside the sauce. Low heat. That sauce could burn easily. While I'm waiting, I'll peel as much blackened skin off of the peppers as possible. Again, a little is fine, so only take off what you can easily take off. I'll stack those up and just cut them into big strips. Love roasted peppers. And they go to reheat in the pan, and I'm very gently stirring things around. I don't want the chicken or the peppers to break apart. Time to tear in some last-minute fresh herb, and I'm doing sage. You could use almost anything. And that is done. Some mashed cauliflower on the plate. Carefully lift over a chicken thigh. Don't let it break apart. And then spoon on some more peppers and sauce. A little fresh thyme at the end just for pretty. And wow, that chicken just falls apart. The sauce is like a jam. It's so rich and sweet and intense. And the cauliflower beautiful beautifully performs the function of a starch, which is to soak up any extra sauce. It's sweet. It's a perfect counterpoint to the smoky chicken and peppers. That is a delicious low-carb meal. I know it's not traditional cacciatore, but give this method a chance. The only downside is it only makes four or five portions because you need so much surface area. But if you're just cooking for a few people, that is a really special flavor.